Happy Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. And welcome to the Back Catalog Listening Party. My name is Mother Banjo, one of your hosts. My name is Anthony Erig, the other host. And today we have joining us from Manhattan, Kieran Alawalia. Hello. <laughs> and we are so happy to have you with us today. And we're happy that folks are joining the party right on time. It's Friday and folks are feeling it and want to party and hear some music. Connie joining us from Richfield. Hi, hey, Connie. Connie. And Alex says, back from three months of traveling in our trailer mm. and ready to listen to some great music with G&Ts in hand. It's spring. Right. That's right. Get out <laughs> the is. springtime cocktails, folks. Finally. Uh, Joe says, drifting on the BCLP stream in Minneapolis on a fine Friday afternoon. It, it is beautiful here in Minneapolis. No doubt, really Joe. Um, and then Chris says, stellar weather day in the neighborhood, kicking it with some Dusseldorf style all Alt beer style for today's Festivus. That's right. Uh, however you celebrate Friday, thank you for being here. Uh, looks like Christy joining us uh, from Cambridge, Minnesota. And we are happy to have you all here. And, um, and in particular, I'm really excited today because not only is it a beautiful spring day here in Minneapolis after having some weird weather, snow and whatnot, but also I am breaking out some bubbly because... Um, not only is it a Friday, which is always worth celebrating, but it is also um, a release day for Kieran Alwaya. She uh, is putting out her new record into the world, Comfort Food. So congratulations uh, to Kieran. Second round of applause and a big Thank cheers. You. Cheers to you, Kieran. What a right. big accomplishment. Another album out in the world. We love albums here at the Back Catalog Listening Party. Yep. If you're new to the program, we believe in the album format. We believe in these collections of songs and the way that they exist in the world, having been recorded at a certain time in a certain place with certain people. Um, the, the, the kind of stories and everything that kind of surround the album uh, is what we're all about. So another new one out in the world. Congratulations. And uh, someday you. it will be back catalog too. No. Exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, and Tony, are you enjoying a, a beverage on your Friday afternoon? I am. I am. I was supposed to be um, in an airplane right now, um, <laughs> flying uh, to, to California to visit family for our spring break. But unfortunately, we got some COVID in our house. Um, everybody's okay, um, but we are homebound. So I w went, I walked down to the to the local liquor store and got a, a tasty summer beer. Um, this is a, a Sierra Nevada hazy little thing IPA in my back catalog listening party point glass. The best way to drink a beverage for sure. And it <laughs> looks like um, Alinda join us from Connecticut having afternoon tea. Excellent. Sounds good. And uh, Kieran, are you enjoying any snacks or beverages on your Friday afternoon? <laughs> Um, well, I was. I was just finished my tea mm -hmm. uh, as we were speaking backstage, and now I'm enjoying some bubbly water. Nice. Um, nice. And, Always... uh, yeah, remnants of some cookies. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> love that. Gotta love yeah. that. Yeah. Um, well, I know it's been some excitement in New York City where you live uh, today. Uh, there was an earthquake. Uh, everyone okay in your world? Yes. So there haven't been any um, building collapses or damage that, that we know of yet. The last I checked the, the, the news. But yeah, it happened around, God, I don't even remember what time it was. Was it 1030 or 1130? It must have been like 11 or something. And I've, I've been in an earthquake as a child back in India, but I've never actually felt an earthquake. And um, I'm on the 10th floor and our building does sway with heavy wind. So I've, I've experienced the swaying a little bit in, in the hurricanes, but uh, I was sitting checking my New, York, my New York Times online and just, I was sitting and like my butt was moving and the walls were moving and it lasted like, like two or three seconds, mm. which is, you know, a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I came right out running, you know, uh, talked to my husband and guitarist was a bossy and then, uh, called the superintendent, like, should we leave the building? And, you know, there was a bit of a panic. My, my neighbor who's elderly, I was like, do we need to like knock on her door and get her out and go down mm -hmm. 10 flights of stairs? Um, so all the neighbors were talking and we didn't know what it was. And it took a while for us to get the emergency alerts on our phones and for the news to, to come on to say it's been an earthquake. 
But mm -hmm. uh, like social media was like the first to grab mm -hmm. onto it. You know, people on social media saying, did anyone else feel that? Yeah. It was so quick. But we're all okay. Oh, Good. Yes, thank goodness. And we're so glad that you could still join us today. Yes, yes. And um, as am I. Thank you for having <laughs> me. And hi, everybody. I see all your comments. Yeah. Um, well, we are so excited. Uh, again, uh, for those of you new to the show, this is the show where we invite different guest artists to revisit their old records. Uh, Tony mentioned we're big fans of the album format. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Karen's 2011 release. Um, and we're going to listen to some songs together, talk about them. We welcome your comments and questions as we go. Um, but for folks who maybe are less familiar with your music, uh, Kieran, and your background, maybe you could give uh, a brief, like, two-minute origin story of where you grew up and uh, how you came into uh, making music. I was born in India, and I grew up in Canada. But as an adult, I went back to India to study uh, music full-time for over 10 years. And um, currently living in, in New York City, dividing my time between New York City and Canada. And i uh, been doing music since uh, 2000, released my first album in 2000. Excuse me. And I started out uh, more traditional, doing more traditional Indian music. But over, over the years, I have been able to incorporate more of my actual personality, which is I'm a, you know, I have a hyphenated culture. I'm an Indian and I'm a Canadian person of the West. So I brought in more Western elements and uh, Rez uh, Abbasi, my, my guitarist and husband, was uh, quite influential in bringing those Western elements in with his electric guitar. And then I've done lots of collaborations, but when I collaborated with the Tuareg people of Mali, Algeria from the Sahara Desert, most notably Tenariwan, that collaboration changed my life. Uh, uh, I've just now, since then, that was, I think in my like, uh, fifth album and that, that influence has always been in my subsequent albums. This is now my eighth album that I'm re releasing today, awesome. but we're talking today about that seminal album for me that changed my life. Excellent. Yes. The 2011 album, Am Zameen, uh, Common Ground. And uh, tell us a little bit about um, when you went in to record this album, because I'm guessing when you started to record the album, you don't always know what's going to be a seminal album or a pivotal album in your discography. Um, so uh, when you went in to record this album, uh, what were you what were you thinking? Uh, were you um, obviously you're planning that collaboration with Tanarwin, but uh, anything else that you had in mind when you set out to record this record? Uh, what did I have in mind? Uh, the, I mean, just that, that we were going to make the album with, with, with uh, a group of Tuareg musicians, Tenari One, uh, who is a legendary group from the Sahara Desert, and then Tara Kaft, who were then an up-and-coming band from the Sahara Desert. And one of the members of Tara Kaft was an original member of Tenari One, actually. And um, so actually, like before this album, I had an album called Wanderlust and uh, I did something, I composed something influenced by Tenari Wen and Tuareg music in that album. Then I was being awarded this uh, Songlines Award in Copenhagen at the Womex in Copenhagen. And there, when I went there to get that award, I met Tenari One's producer, Justin Adams, who also produces for Robert Plant. And so when I met him, I told him I'm such a fan of his work with Tenari One and that, I'm com that I've composed something based on the album that he produced. And he said, okay, send it to me. So I came back, I sent it to him and he said, uh, it's really good. Why don't you do something with them? Mm. And I said, oh, like I, I <laughs> never even like thought of that. I didn't even know that that was an option. And uh, so that's how we started talking about doing something with them. Excellent. Amazing. That is Amazing. so great. And if I'm, if I'm correct, they're actually on the first track that we're going to listen to. Is that, is that right? Yes. That's great. What can you tell us about this one? So the Tuareg people, um, they're a nomadic people. And they, they live in the Sahara Desert. And uh, they're the indigenous people of that area. So they've been living there before boundaries happened. And so now the Sahara Desert uh, falls in many different countries, including Mali and Algeria. And um, 
they are Muslims. So they come from the Islamic tradition. And at first I composed something for them, Rabbaru, the song Rabbaru. But as I was thinking about it, I thought that because they are such a legendary band, I wanted to do a legendary song with mm. them. And so I decided to do Rabbaru with Terakaft. And so um, uh, I was looking for a legendary classic song. And so since they come from the Islamic tradition, I picked uh, a Qawwali, which is a Sufi uh, type of music uh, from Pakistan. And uh, this Qawwali, Mast Mast, was made famous by Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan in the West. And so I thought, if I do this Qawwali, it's going to be something different for South Asians, for Indians and Pakistanis, because they've never heard a woman sing this Qawwali, mm -hmm. and they haven't heard electric guitars, and I'll do it in a different way that it'll be something new for them. And yet it'll be common ground for them because they will understand the words Ali, Ali, and Muhabbad. And, and then also um, the format is, is, is similar, like uh, the, the Tenariwan and Tuareg music has hand claps and Qawwali has hand claps. In Tuareg music, there's a lot of call and response and Qawwali has a lot of call and response. So I felt that they would feel comfortable with the format and structure. It would be a seminal legendary song to do and it would be something new for people who know the music. So that's how I picked it. Oh, fantastic. Excellent. Perfect. Um, we're going to give it a listen right now. Uh, this is Kieran Alawalia here on the Back Catalog Listening Party.
<laughs> Kieran Alawalia with uh, joined by Tanara Wynn for that track, Must Must, Amazing. from her 2011 release, Amzameen Common Ground, which we are revisiting with Kieran, joining us today live uh, from her home in New York City. And uh, lots of folks loving uh, that song. And uh, Joe says... There's a most joyful video of this one out there, and he wants to know if those are studio clips from the actual recording of this song. They are the actual studio recording. Yep, I remember that. Um, uh, it was so stressful, like you know, putting all this together, and uh, there was only a very small time frame that we had, and there wasn't enough time. But uh, you know, I got everything together, like all our tickets booked to Paris, because. We were recording all of this in France. Uh, mm. This was this particular session was in Paris, so it all ha happened had to happen very fast because it was a small window. And uh, I remember, like, uh, I just didn't have time to deal with like someone uh, coming in and recording us, uh, uh, filming us, and shooting us. So my my manager at the time set that up, and he made that happen. And I'm ever so glad that he did. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll make sure to link to that video in our show notes, which will, you can find at backcataloglisteningparty.com. Yes. And uh, Alex saying almost like trance music. And then Chris saying, imagine people dancing to this. And of course, we were dancing as we are going to that. But, you know, <laughs> I'd love to know, you mentioned that this is uh, a Muslim tune. And I'd love to know the sort of, because this version is extremely danceable. Um, but I'd love to know like sort of the original context of that song. Um, I know in some traditions, um, sometimes music that has uh, a religious uh, connotation is not typically played for people who dance. And so I'd be curious, uh, would it be common for people to dance to this song in uh, previous iterations of it? So it comes from the Islamic tradition, but it comes from a sect of the tradition that which is called the Sufi tradition, mm -hmm. like Rumi was a Sufi, and Rufi, Rumi, who comes from the Islamic tradition, is uh, one of America's most popular poets. Um, so that is a, a more liberal uh, sect that that believes in dance and reaching the divine through dance and art by losing oneself in order to give oneself over to the divine. Um, and the song is actually talking about intoxication and get, getting intoxicated by the divine, with, mm -hmm. the, with the thought of the divine. Now, traditionally, when Nusrut would, would sing this song, people, like he wouldn't be singing it in a club, he'd be singing it in a show and people in Pakistan wouldn't have gotten up so much. Like some people might have gotten up to dance a little bit mm -hmm. and they might have twirled like the whirling dervishes. Uh, so there might have been like that kind of movement, like, you know, with the head. Um, they might have clapped along. Um, but it's not dance in the same way as we think of it in the Western world. But they would have moved their bodies in, in different ways. Yeah, well, it seems like uh, you really channeled that idea of sort of like uh, connecting to the divine through through this music because folks were really feeling that <laughs> yeah. that vibe out there for sure. Thank you. And, and speaking of uh, kind of like Western folk music, we're like I'm not used to hearing some of the notes that I heard you sing on that. Um, you know, we a lot of us have fretted instruments that don't have those in between notes, and is that part of your classical Indian um, training? Um, yeah, def def definitely. Uh, yes, definitely. Um, so in Indian music, we use microtones, which are the tones that are in between uh, two sets of notes. So if there's 12 notes, which, you know, somehow the world has now agreed that there are 12 <laughs> notes. Um, in, in ancient Indian music um, theory, there are apparently 22 notes. Mm. Um, uh, and, but, but the human mind, we can't sing those 22 accurately. Like, uh, we can't find them accurately. Um, so we do, uh, when we're going from one note to second note, we do like slides, we glide mm. into the note. We don't hit it right on. 
and so we do have we ornament the music that way. It was beautiful, really. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful to hear. You know, there's some fretless uh, banjos, uh, Ellen. Maybe we can mm -hmm. we can start working to find those other uh, those other those notes. microtones. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, uh, again, Karen Alawalia joining us live today on the Back Catalog Listening Party. Throw in your comments and questions in there. Uh, so this album that we're revisiting came out in 2011, Am Zameen and uh, Common Ground. Is that what Am Zameen means? Uh, yes. So I wanted to name it Common Ground and absolutely like by the book, academically speaking, the closest translation um, of Am Zameen is ordinary ground, mm. but it's the closest that I could come to common ground. So that's why I named it Am Zameen. I uh, like Am Zameen would be a ground where, you know, we all can go play soccer or something. It's an ordinary right. it's ground. shared ground. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Shared ground. Yeah. Common Excellent. Goal. Has that always been a value that you've uh, had with when it comes to music? Uh, well, it's um, when I am collaborating, because I do collaborate a lot, I'm looking at both the similarities and the differences mm. in the music, because uh, the whole reason I want to collaborate with someone is because they're bringing something different to my music. And then um, I have to think about how can their difference shine in my music hmm. and then i think about the common stuff and and trying to to make a bed of stuff that there's a there's a the common language in there and then trying to to also accentuate the the beautiful difference that there is i love that i love that. yeah well let's hear more of uh the music because i know folks are itching for that and this next track that you picked to feature from this record is is it raburu Yes, that's a Roberto, yeah. And um, and this uh, song on the album, so folks are like listening to it on the digital places. Um, they'll find this separated into two tracks. There's an intro and then there's the, the track. But when you first recorded it, did you see it as one unified track? I did. I saw it as a unified track. Um, but... Uh, this was still like, you know, for, for 14 years ago or something that we did it. And so we did want to make the length radio friendly. So we, we separated the intro into a single track and then, and then had the actual song as a separate track for radio friendly purposes of, you know, making it smaller in time. Well, luckily here on Back Catalog, <laughs> we don't care about that. So no, we're going to play we're, the intro. With and it. we're fascinated with how you tell stories with the longer forms. Yeah. You know, and I think uh, it's so interesting. So when you're composing something like this, this idea of this long extended um, intro that we're going to hear, um, that was something that, 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 was that something that you came up with? Is that something that you, you worked with your band to come up with? How does the, the kind of the composition process work for you with these songs? So, oh, the, 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 the or arrangement maybe is the better. Yeah. Yeah. Better the composition term. process, I work very closely with Raz, the guitarist who's going to do the intro. So since we're married, it's, it's easy to work with him closely. So many times he'll just be sitting right here on the couch watching TV. Um, and I'll be working on my computer and he'll play something that I absolutely love and I'll put my my phone on and record it, and then just tuck it away to compose to later. Um, other times I'll be singing something and he'll hear me, and uh, he'll he'll comment on it like, "Oh, that's good," and "That's not so good," or "Why'd you do this?" <laughs> so we work very closely together, um, in, in like you know lots of different ways that are sometimes hard to articulate in words. Mm. Um, but, but if we weren't married, it would be hard to work together this much. Like we're very integrated into the music. <laughs> and he's playing this, this intro that we're about to listen to. Is yes, that exactly. Yep. All right. Well, let's give it a listen. Uh, this is Kieran Alawalia here on the back catalog listening party.
That was Kieran Alawalia with Rabu Roo here on the Back Catalog Listening Party from her 2011 album Am Zameen, Common Ground. And um, what a beautiful collaboration on that, especially the singing. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. I know you mentioned uh, the band that you worked with on that, but tell us how that came to be. Um, well, I just uh, was... Uh... I thought if I have Tanari Wen, uh, wanted to, you know, have another Tuareg band as well. And um, we were going to record with Tanari Wen in Paris. So uh, um, I happened to know the manager of Terra Kaft and they happened to, uh, well, actually, no, they weren't going to be in France. We flew them to France for this one. Um, and we just, we, you know, contacts, we knew their manager. And so, um, it worked out that way, yeah. And the and the arrangement of the song, I, I know you mentioned earlier that a lot of times some of the initial composition arrangement comes from working with, with your husband and guitarist, uh, Reza Bassi. But, um, you know, when you start to flush out more of the band members um, and uh, did you kind of come into it with, it, with an arrangement uh, with the players in mind or did you just kind of work with, especially the guest musicians, to work out the vocal arrangements and all that? They happened organically um, for, for both Mas Mas and Rabaru. Uh, you know, Rez and I showed them the song. And uh, I speak, uh, I have broken French because I grew up in Canada. Uh, and they speak French because they were colonized by France, <laughs> um, as was Canada. Um, <laughs> and so in my broken French, I explained what the, um, uh, the song is about. And we showed it to them. And uh, really, the, the language was just the music. Uh, they mm. organically joined in w where they wanted to. And Diara, who is singing there uh, uh, from Terracaft, he organically just started singing that. Mm. Mm. Um, 
And he never quite was able to explain to me what his words meant. Um, and <laughs> um, I would say, like, you know, this is what the song means. Like, what do your words mean? And he would just say, like, le même chose, like, which means the same thing, the same thing. My words mean the same thing. <laughs> so I was like, okay. <laughs> Amazing. International language of music, folks. Uh, yeah. We love that. And Common Ground, speaking of that, I mean, it feels like there's a lot of that on this album, uh, which yeah. is, I think, really special. Did you did you end up going out and, you know, having uh, dinner or spending more time with some of these, these bands that you're kind of, I know it was real, you know, tight, you know, timelines and you have to get in the studio, but were you able to develop uh, relationships with these bands? Absolutely. Uh, with the Terracaf group, we um, recorded in Angers, France, which is like, I think, I think, I don't know how many hours from Paris, I forget now, at least minimum two hours. Um, and the studio is actually owned by another group, Lojo. Um, and so at night, and we were there for like, uh, I don't know, four or five days or something. So we would have uh, lunches and dinners together. The dinners were catered. Um, and uh, then uh, we would, you know, definitely hang out. And then afterwards, uh, for many, many years, Diara and Sanu would call me as well on WhatsApp. Hmm. Um, and then with Tenari, when uh, the same thing, uh, uh, we spent a few days in Paris together. And then after that, uh, they came to New York City, and uh, I performed with them here in New York City. Then they went to Toronto, and because I'm from Toronto, I went to Toronto and I performed with them in Toronto. And then um, at the very last Festival au Désert in uh, Timbuktu, Mali, the very last one, because then the militants um, took over, there was civil war, and there hasn't been another one after that. So it was dangerous to go. The Canadian consulate in Mali said, don't come. And I said, well, I am coming. And so I went to the festival and performed with Tenari went there as well and spent time with them there mm -hmm. as well. That's great. That's really special. And uh, Joe uh, was commenting that the instrumentation is so rich and complex. Um, are the instruments on separate tracks or does organic mean they they feel the blend as they play. So yeah, I know this is a question Tony always asks about <laughs> about the recording process. Uh, were you guys performing live together? Did you have an initial, you know, bed of tracks and then invite the guest musicians to play? Or how did you work that out? So for Tenari, went for Must the Must, that was all, um, we were all in the studio together. Um, so that was uh, done together. Uh, Ibrahim, who's the lead guitarist, his guitar solo might have been dubbed at a separate time on the same day. Um, like, you know, uh, but, but, uh, cause I think that was a smaller studio in Paris. Um, uh, because there's a little bit of a, I remember on the video, there's, there's footage of him being alone in the studio doing his guitar solo. And then in Angers, with Terracraft, this song, Rabaru, um, everything that we did with Terracraft is live uh, uh, with them. But uh, you, sh you, you guys stopped the song just short of a beautiful Ritti solo that absolutely, absolutely like, takes my heart out of my body and throws it on the ground. Um, so that should entice people to go listen to it because it just like kills me every single time. Um, and so the Ritti was actually overdubbed in London. So it was Justin Adams, who was a producer, because uh, uh, I was just feeling I want something else, but I wanted something from Molly. And Justin said, well, I know a Ritti player. And um, I'm mean, actually, he's not from Molly, but, but uh, Gambia, I think. Um, so, but I liked it when I was introduced to it. So then, all of a sudden, impromptu, we said, okay, let's change our tickets and go to London and uh, book this Ritty so Ritty solo. So we went to London, England to just get that solo. Wow. 
Uh, I, I'm bummed that we couldn't hear it. It, it uh, was what was on the track and it just maybe cut off. I don't know if it was another like separate track or something, nope. but I think if n- whatever technical difficulty happened here, it's yeah. a great reason for everybody to head on over um, to, uh, to Kieran music.com um, and pick up this record and her brand new one that's dropping today. Um, so I know I'm going to, I want to go back and hear it now after that description. I, I, um, yeah. I don't know what happened there, but um, I can't it kills wait to me it. every single time. He just like he just nailed the feeling of that track. And by the way, there's so many people who have both gotten married to this song and mm. gotten introduced during this song and then eventually gotten married. <laughs> Like, See common is, ground again, bringing people yeah. together of all it. and always romantic yeah. ways too. I yeah. love that. So, so many, so many Indians and in Pakistanis have told me that this has been their wedding song. Amazing. Uh, well, and uh, speaking of which, uh, your husband Rezabasi is uh, Pakistani, uh, and you're Indian. Uh, so again, crossing cultures. Um, when you got married, uh, was there a lot of debate as to what music would be played as part of your ceremony? Um, yeah, so Rez Abbasi is actually Amer- American, but Pakistani born. I'm mm-hmm. Canadian, but Indian born. Um, no, there wasn't any debate, um, even though India and Pakistan, I- in case you follow the politics, the uh, situation there are, are, have always been at war since 1945. They're warring nations. And uh, when the two countries were formed, you know, it was all one India. And then after the British left, the country was divided and part of it became Pakistan, part of it was left as India. And it was the the bloodiest and largest land migration ever known, recorded in history. It was an awful time. Both our parents lived through that violent time and saw each other's family members being killed by the other side. Um, but neither of our parents passed down any hatred to us of the other side. Um, And I think it's because they lived through that violence as children, they understood that that kind of hatred can never be allowed to uh, flourish again. Unfortunately, there there are some hate elements that are flourishing again, um, uh, which is unfortunate. But in our case, um, there was no Bollywood drama in our wedding, and uh, our parents are best of friends. They vacationed together. Um, And so, yeah, everything was good. Love that. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, we're going to try and squeeze in as much music as we can before we have to go today. Uh, But again, we want to encourage folks uh, to check out, uh, again, this album that we're revisiting today, uh, Am Zameen, Common Ground, came out in 2011. And um, and also, of course, her new record, Comfort Food, which is out today. And if you go to her website, the, the new record, I, I believe, would be also available on Bandcamp. So if you do the digital kind of download thing, Bandcamp uh, has, a, has a, a great program once a month where they waive all the fees. Um, and so the artist gets 100% of whatever you do. So if you want to go pick up the, the, this record, but then also get her new one. Um, you could go to Bandcamp for that one, and Bandcamp also allows you to pay what you want. So, you know, um, whatever the asking extra. price is, you can throw in a little extra as a tip um, to show Kieran how much uh, we appreciate her music. Yes, indeed. And we're going to enjoy some more of it right now. Um, and uh, this next track that you picked to feature, uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about this one. Right. So this is a uh, track that I composed in the style of a Punjabi folk song. Uh, something quite different than uh, what we've been hearing. It is not a collaboration with uh, the Tuareg groups. Uh, it, this is my band. Um, and so this song is about literally getting intoxicated, like like uh, <laughs> like uh, exactly like the back like of the listening week party. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so the song is saying... Um, just like people who love to get drunk uh, and lose control. Well, just like people who like to get drunk, just like their thirst is never quenched. Mm. They just want to drink more and more and more. In the same way, 
my thirst for my beloved is never quenched. Mm. And I am, you know, a dr I'm drunk on his love. Mm. And yeah, so that's the song. I love it. This is Kieran Alawalia here on the Back Catalog Listening Party. शराबी पी के हो जान टली जिवे पींदे ने शराबी पी के हो जान टली पावे किन्हीं वी पी जान पर होवे ना तसली पावे किन्हीं वी पी जान पर होवे ना तसली मैं भी होवे प्यार विच हो गई बलली मैं भी होवे प्यार विच हो गई बलली मैं नुआज
Okay, I think that's actually the end of that track. That is Karen Alawalia here on the Back Catalog Listening Party. And uh, such a and, great tune. And that was the Ritti. So the Ritti was playing on this tune too. We had oh, him play on this one too. Yeah. That, so that rustic sounding in instrument was the Ritti, which is an African Yeah, can instrument. you explain yeah. that for I was wondering about the instrumentation on this track. I heard a bowed instrument. Is that what, the, what we were hearing? That was what we were hearing at the uh, at the end there, and he also did a solo. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. how do you uh, how do you spell that? Just for my own interest. R yeah, R I T T I. All right, we're gonna check that out. It was beautiful. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and what other instruments were we hearing on that? Some tabla, um, accordion, maybe. Tabla and uh, harmonium. Ah, yeah. harmonium, which is a bellowed keyboard. Mm -hmm. Uh, which originally, like, I don't know, 150 years ago was in Germany. Uh, it used to be on a table, it used to, like a piano, like the, the and like, a, like an accordion on its side on the table, and then it had pedals on the bottom. Then when it came from Germany to India, at that time, most of the music was done sitting cross-legged because everything was done sitting cross-legged. So they got rid of the pedals and they adapted it to Indian music. And it's, hmm. it doesn't even exist anymore in Germany. It's a very Indian instrument now. Excellent. Well, uh, such a beautiful, beautiful tune. Again, uh, this song you can find on Kieran's 2011 release, Am Zameen Common Ground. And this album, uh, not only is it full of amazing sounds and stories and uh uh, you know, different music influencing each other and cool collaborations, but also it won you quite a bit of recognition as well. It, it got you a, a Juno, which for those of you who don't know, is like the Canadian Grammy and also a Canadian Folk Music Award. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it was uh, an album that did um, uh, do quite well. And um, before I forget, I'll, I'll, put this album I don't I don't think is on Bandcamp so I'm just after we finish this I'm going to quickly put it on Bandcamp the new album that it releases today is on Bandcamp Comfort Food and I'll try to put this one up so when this album came out I remember I got a call from a distributor in Japan who wanted to get 100 copies and so I remember I had to phone my friend at Harmonia Mundi in France saying, do you guys deal with this Japanese distributor? And they said, yes, I do. We do. And so, you know, check them out, sent them a couple hundred copies actually in the end. And, um, and, and then there were people from Pakistan who, you know, individually got in touch with me individually to buy individual copies. Um, so um, it, it was, it was very good to get out there. Yeah. That's wonderful. Um, and again, you can get a copy of it. You can also get a copy of that new record at uh, kieranmusic.com on our website. Uh, and again, some of the albums available on Bandcamp. I do also want to mention that uh, you're about, uh, in celebration of this new album that comes out today, you're going to be on tour with your band, uh, playing dates across North America in Ontario, Massachusetts, New York, uh, Illinois, Minnesota. Yay, Minnesota. Um, we're excited about you coming to the Cedar Cultural Center on May 11th and then going to New Mexico. So you have a lot coming up. Uh, and if, uh, will you bring, be bringing some of these same players? I know not to Narwin, but uh, <laughs> are you bringing some of your same band, band members on this tour? Absolutely. Rez will be, will, will be with me on guitar uh, the tabla player that you heard uh, on these on the these songs, Nit and Mitta, will be with me. Um, and uh, then on accordion and organ, we'll have Luis Simao, who's been my band member for at least ten years now. And on drum kit will be uh, Dhevat Jani. Excellent. Uh, yeah. Excellent. I'll say that uh, in prepping for the show, I stumbled on some YouTube videos. Um, of Kieran playing live, and I couldn't stop watching them. I actually almost missed our our uh, our pre-show call time because I was <laughs> in the middle of one of your one of your videos. Amazing, amazing live performer. So you really don't want to miss miss uh, Kieran if she's showing up in your town. Again, you can learn more at uh, at uh, kieranmusic.com. Thank and I, I will also say she just has a very robust YouTube channel with a bunch of new videos as well that are pretty amazing. So uh, you can uh, subscribe to her YouTube channel. And of course, if you're watching here, Back Catalog Listening Party, you can subscribe to ours as well. And uh, we're going to get to one more song. But before we do, I want to uh, take this opportunity to thank our Patreon supporters 
who have kept this show going for the last four years, allowing us to revisit old records with over 200 guests. And this is all thanks to these folks who have supported the show and continue to do so. Penny, Anna, Linda, Bevan, Connie, Vaughn, Alan, Chris, Alex, Becky, Peggy, Joe, Jim, Beverly, John, Fred, Tim, Sarah, David, Jocelyn, Matt, Steve, Mark, Homestead, Pick and Parlor, Severin, Lynn, Mary, Many Tracks, Nikki, Joni, David, CJ, Wiley, Stephanie, Christy, Diane, and maybe you, if you would like to support the show and get invited to special after parties, get that cool back catalog listening party pint glass that uh, Tony is sporting right there uh, sent to you, then you can join our Patreon. You also get first look at all the guests and um, uh, some invites to some special uh, viewings and whatnot. So you can check that out. Uh, but mainly, we're just excited to have you all here. So if you have any last minute comments or questions for yeah, Kieran, get them in. Go. Yeah. Um, so we have time for one more track, sadly. Uh, we we wish we had time for more. more. This is going by so <laughs> fast. fast. It's too, too much fast. fun. Um, so what can you tell us about uh, this tune? I love this tune. Safar. Safar means journey. And um, my favorite words in this uh, tune are, so the, so the lyrics are written by a psychologist, a Pakistani-Canadian psychologist living in Toronto. Uh, Dr. Sohail, uh, Khalid Sohail, and then I, I liked the poem so much, I composed it and decided to sing it. My favorite words are saying, um, my destination is actually getting further and further away. Perhaps all this time I've been walking backwards. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh my God, I feel that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. That, that's a, that's an amazing, amazing concept. And I'll be thinking about it while we listen to this one. Um, this is Kieran Alawalia wrapping up our show here today on the Back Catalog Listening Party.
What a great ending oh. to that song. <laughs> I didn't I want to that. step yeah. on that, uh, that ringing out of that last guitar chord. It's so great. Uh, that was Kieran Alawalia from her 2011 release, Amzameen Common Ground. And uh, Chris says, thank you for the show. Kieran, thank you for being on the show and sharing cultural stories. Great show. Um, and thank you all for being a part of this show, because this is what makes it special. Uh, we love uh, listening to music and Tony and I would be doing this anyway, and we'd be listening to Kieran's music anyway, but having you here to enjoy it with us and to listen in real time together is uh, is really special, especially on a song like that that uh, is so moving. And uh, I love how it has that movement you're talking about. It's it's uh, the song, the lyrical component about, about kind of traveling backwards. Um, mm. But you definitely feel the travel happening in that. So it's really <laughs> that's great. Good. Yeah, that's great. I, I do too. And uh, you can pick up this album. Again, there's so many more tracks that we didn't get to. And you can hear that whole solo of uh, that we missed on one of the yes. tunes. You can check that out at KarenMusic.com. You can check out that album. You can get a copy of her new album out today, Comfort Food, available on her website and also Bandcamp.com. You can throw in a little extra as a tip on Bandcamp.com as well. And I'll try to put this album on Bandcamp right now. Excellent. <laughs> right. Okay. I'm sure you have plenty to do with your album coming out and get, getting ready to be on tour, but we're so grateful you took the time to chat with us today yes. because this is, you can't beat hearing from the artists themselves and telling these stories about recording and flying people into Paris and, uh, <laughs> you know, all of that stuff. Music. Just, yeah. It was so we, I also just appreciate it. It's been a, it's been a rough week here over at our, our house and, and like COVID every house. week, the music, um, it just, it, it heals. And, and your music really did that today, uh, Karen. Oh, so thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm wishing everybody in your house, Anthony, a, a speedy COVID recovery. Thank you. And <laughs> thanks everybody for joining. And thanks for making time for me, you guys. This is oh, so great. And if pleasure. you and if you liked it, like it on YouTube. Give it a thumbs up. Direct more bots to Karen Alwalia. Check out her YouTube channel because she has so many great videos. And one that just came out today, uh, one of the songs from her new record. So you can check that out as well because so yeah. such great content. And we'll put links uh, to her website and her YouTube video and all those things um, in uh, the show notes, which you can find at backcataloglisteningparty.com slash 204. And uh, we hope everyone has a wonderful week. And as Joni uh, said, music is medicine. That's what Tony's hat says, by the way, if you didn't know, Alexa Dawson's oh. hat. Um, and uh, we believe that here at the Back Catalog Listening Party. So we hope you get lots of medicine and uh, lots of music this week mm -hmm. and uh, that you all stay safe and well. And uh, have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Cheers right. and congrats on the new record, yes, Kieran. Yes, congrats, Kieran. Thank you. And we'll see everybody else here next week here on the Back Catalog Listening Cheers. Party. Cheers. Cheers.